the store the Cali killer Take it for what it's worth but recognize a blood killer So far I've been lucky but enemies might make me Take chances again if they underestimate me First, try your blessings, grab your weapon, grip it tight Cause tonight is more hard for the worst sweatshirt right? You won't catch me barking duels in a lark tonight Look up, grab up my foot and down the street I got a stolen bike That's my getaway but first I gotta sit late Working in the shadows I'm itching to do my hidden shake Patience always pays so I'm stiffer than a statue by no means I'm a fuck this up, this fuck this life is past I know he's on the TV's on, I see a shadow to the blinds Walking towards the front door, yeah, I think it's about that time Sure enough, our room is wide, now he's stepping outside Barrel flashes from the bus, that's all he's seen in he died In the corner, run down the block, up on the BMX Meanwhile, his bitches are shot, hugging his bleeding chest Barrel to my face, spy, get the fireplace hot Burn up my clothes, burn my body, come down and trace Go on the way home, I disassembled and dispersed Of a weapon in the gutters from 10th Street to first so I'm feeling pretty confident my mission was successful Kick up my feet, cracking on the and drinking chest full Listen to the tales of this Northern Cali killer Take it for what it's worth, but recognize a blood killer So far I've been lucky, but enemies might make me Take chances again if they underestimate me Listen to the tales of this Northern Cali killer Take it for what it's worth, but recognize a blood killer So far I've been lucky, but enemies might make me Take chances again if they underestimate me me, stress me to the point I'm homicidal Don't they recognize that there's nothing new in my eyes When it comes to defending my title Another sloppy late night in the drive through waiting for our food Me and two homies in a fist, drinking for and balloons Out of two, but I sense someone burning holes in my head I turn around, fools are looking at me like they want me dead Words were said without a doubt, I'm knowing that the bones kill me They must be packing, fuck that, I'll be the first to jump something Told my homie driving, pulled the car to the side of the road They pulled the center word or two to I proceeded to unload Bullets light up the backseat Windows are shattering Since I'm thinking that they pack heat I'm skipping the channel I hit the clip Not sure how many were hit I told my homie driving the split He started to trip He just stopped like he was comatose, I said it's not the time to break out like a hole. Let's go, he finally put the pedal to the metal, but that tripped me out. I told him drive a half a mile, pull over and let me out. Shake the spot and take the under routes, park up in the cuss. Now this motherfucker starts driving in circles, going up, scrambling on about. I think he blew his brains out. So good, that's another reason we should vanish. Not hang out. I told him, yo, bitch, got more nuts than you saw right and blue behind us. Thanks to my homie, gone, bitch, it wasn't too hard to find us. Then he proceeds to take him on a slow speed chase. 25, I'm gonna face it. He ain't got a clean case With about seven different patrol cars in pursuit He pulls over and five of drugs and weapons ready to shoot I broke the bull horn, I can hear him say I did exactly that, but then I broke and made him give chase Striking through a field, I hit a bar wire fence I hopped in like a champ and only got a rip in my pants I advanced up on a bike trail, slowly losing 50 sail Notice why they do the left, through my strap in the canal Half the evidence gone, apartment complex straight ahead I'm more than halfway to home, I'm only giving up dead I gotta stop to take a breath in the apartment for now Listen, I can hear the ghetto bird, but it ain't knowing my position Continuing on my mission, I'm hopping yard to yard Crawling bush to bush, hiding underneath car to car Now three hours Later ran about two miles down the road I'm in front of my homie's house My heart's about to explode Knocked on the door at 4 a.m. He wasn't one bit surprised He said he heard me on the scanner And he knew I'd arrive You still got text and don't feel that? You're faking it Listen to the tales of this Northern Cali killer Take it for what it's worth But recognize a blood killer I, I love how I love how Wood says I love how he says that You're faking it That's that's just how he would say that That's I mean that's just you notice there's like a little twine in his fucking. You're faking it. <laughs> like a fuck. This is it, guys. This is the motherfucking drive thru. This is the drive thru he's talking about. This spot right here used to be a Taco Bell back in the day. And the cruise would start all the way downtown, like way out there, downtown, 2nd Street, and go around up to 3rd, connect back to G. So, like, G would go down 2nd. Back around a third and then come back up to G. G would come all the way the motherfuck up to 10th Street and then take 10th Street down to L Street, L Street to Sycamore, through this neighborhood I just went through, right up into here, turn around, go back around that way, and do it all over again. And that was the fucking that was the fucking Antioch Cruise. <laughs> that shit was hella fun. It was it was fucking dope. I mean, my boy HB lived on L and fucking 11th, right? So the crews just went right by his house. And we'd kick it there and bonfire and shit. And just, you know, just fucking holler at bitches or whatever. Or just, just kick it, you know, just drink beer and shit. But, of course, shit popped off all the time. 
especially later on. You know, you always got the cowboys out there wanting to fucking prove themselves or fucking, I don't know, they start shit, you know, because the, the more we got a name, <clears throat> the more a motherfucker started shit with us and shit. <laughs> but they got dealt with and, you know, they just get all bad, so they eventually, they shut down the crews. So now they got signs up and all over the place that say cruising prohibited. <laughs> My boy John Silva was in a car club one time. I was like, bro, let's fucking just do the cruise. He had hell of lowriders and shit. So let's just take that shit out and do the cruise. Start that shit back up again. Oh, fuck, man. The cops and the out cops nowadays, hell, they were youngsters back then. They probably remember the cruise. Probably wouldn't do shit. Now it's just a regular Mexican restaurant, one out of a thousand in this fucking area. Hmm. I don't know if it was any good, but shit used to fucking pop off here all the fucking time. I mean, shit. Right here, this used to be a KFC. That motherfucker burnt down. There's a McDonald's and it was a KFC slash AM PM and motherfucker burnt down. I don't know, I don't know. And uh, I remember one time, my boy V, this is when we was like still not that deep and shit. We, we was kicking it right here and some fools over here started seeing my boy Vic got right up in front with a red rag over his arm like, what motherfuckers? Like, just a, we here representing fool. They didn't want to. But yeah, so wood. There, let's go. Let's go. Why did I shut my motherfucking car off? God damn it! I gotta. I told myself, well, and 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 because I, I try to not swear as much. And I, <laughs> I was shooting a video the other day, and I fucking see. I swore, like I couldn't, like I just like one after I'm like, wait a minute, I'm like like trying not to swear, but the more I tried, like more I swore. It was like, fuck. See, goddamn shit. <laughs> it's gonna be tough, but. <laughs> I don't know if it's a, let's say it's a buck, I swear, I think I'm already up to, what, I don't know, six or seven dollars, maybe. All right, so check this out. So the cruise around, so actually, in all reality, he wasn't waiting for his food. They decided just to go because the line was just too long. So he actually didn't order anything. And I guess as they're cruising around here, motherfuckers bugging and shit, talking shit, because, you know, it was backed up and stuff. And uh, so they come out this way. One time there was a mistake, and I didn't. These poor dudes, man. Boy. We just surrounded the car and fuckers dragged motherfuckers out, banked on, beat the fuck out of them right here, right here. There's families in there eating and shit. Eh, you know, what are you gonna do? I just started dating this, my high school sweetheart at the time. <laughs> anyway, so he, okay, so he take off, he tells fucking my driver to pull the side of the road, right? Wait, just let this motherfucker go real quick. So they're gonna dip, these motherfuckers following. You know, they was talking shit, they all want wood. So he tells the motherfucker pull over the side of the road. Right here. Pink notices nothing but a fucking empty lot and shit, right? So apartments, motherfuckers roll up, talking shit. Boy was behind the driver. Passenger side right here. Said, fuck it, I'll be the first to dump something. Bop, 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 bop. Proceeded to unload. <laughs> Windows are shattering. Not sure how many was hit. I told my homie the driver of the split. He started the trip. He just stopped. Froze like he was coming to us. So I'm gonna let my boy Drew Vaughn. He's doing a fucking. He's doing like a, a like a documentary type deal. God damn, what the fuck was that? Damn, bitch had a crazy ass yellow wig on and shit. Like not even like regular like a hair color. Like just straight yellow. Like fucking watch out and shit. I mean, what is that? What, what does yellow stand for? <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know, slow down, hazard or some shit, whatever. Fuck. But anyway, uh, so my boy Drew Vaz, he's putting together a documentary thing. He's been doing all kinds of research. Got like, you know, paperwork from the trial and all that stuff, you know, that Wood went through after all that, whatnot. Because eventually, you know, he, he got away. The, everything that he said in that fucking, that, that whole verse, that shit's legit. And he even had the pants with the rip in it. Uh, he fucking sport shit, you know? Yeah, but he ended up turning himself in. Um, but, you know, they had no gat or nothing like that. Anyway, but what, who I want to talk about is the driver. <laughs> because the driver, the driver, <laughs> the driver was a good only Big motherfucker. But I want to just, what I want to talk about, though, I'm going to wait. I'm, I'm going to get back in a sec. I don't want to do this in the car. <laughs> I need to be standing up for this shit. Was, uh, I want to talk about a fight he got in. Cause this motherfucker, he was a big dude, like a be like a big teddy bear, kind of kind of like like Raymond. He wasn't like you know didn't wasn't like like slow in a way like that, but he just kind of you know just a real big softy teddy bear type guy, you know like big as fuck, 
you know, big dudes don't really fight all that much because nobody ever starts shit with them. He says little guys that always got to scrap around in the street, fucking, I say scrap, but you know what I mean. Fucking get down because motherfuckers always start shit trying to bully and punk. <laughs> and you see, I, I love, I fucking hate being underestimated, but I love it sometimes because I love showing motherfuckers up. But, uh, whatever, I'm not trying to, anyway, um, let's get back to it. All right, so when I stop, I'm gonna, then I'll tell you the story about the, about the driver. Uh, a little bit about him and this fucking... He, this motherfucker fought like one of the toughest... One of the toughest motherfuckers in all the yacht. Everybody knew this motherfucker. I'm going to call him... Um, we're just going to call him... Uh, LM. Right? LM was a, he was a friend of mine too. Uh, he hung out with C and them on 19th Street. And uh, you know, he, he wasn't like a gangbanger, but he was... <laughs> but he was a thug. and uh, But a cool ass motherfucker. Like, you know... But... Sometimes he'd roll around, you know, they would sometimes, you know, kind of, you know, punk people here and there. And he one day spit in, we're going to call the driver A.B., spit in A.B.'s face. And A.B., you know, what the fuck is he going to do? L.M. whoop his ass, right? <laughs> what the fuck? But homies were like, bro, you know, <laughs> I mean, we get it and shit, but motherfuckers spit in your face. You know what I'm saying? Like... You know, you, you can't just let that go. Like, you, you got to stand up for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to win or lose don't matter. You know what I mean? You just, you can't let yourself get punked like that. And so, you know, it's like, otherwise, like, you're not really down. And it's like, fucking, can you be relied on? You know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, but we had love for him. A.B. was a cool motherfucker. So, he knew it. He's like, fuck, all right, you know. He knew he was going to have to do it. To save his own fucking um, pride, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just so he got it, he got it, but he, you know, he was scared. So word got around eventually to LM that uh, now we we all went to Live Oak this time too. We, it was it was cool, but uh, it, it, we, hella fools would go to Live Oak and like different crews and shit. And we, you know, we all get along while in school and stuff, and be sometimes gunning for each other on the weekend. <laughs> it's crazy, but uh. Anyway, so, word gets around, LM here is like, oh, wait, he's looking for me? That motherfucker's looking for me? Oh, shit, I'm about to okay. And, uh, actually, you know what? I'm right, I'm right up here. Look, here's Antioch High. I'm on fucking 18th Street right now. Look at these kids. Fucking nerds. I fucking know we didn't look like that. They look like babies and shit. I, I always feel like a grown man by the time I was 15, 16, because I already been through fucking hell and back. You know what I'm saying? Most of the people we hung out with was older than anyway and shit. Fucking West 20th Street was full of fucking tweakers. Get us beer and stuff. We'd fucking be frying on acid all fucking night. They'd be all cranked the fuck out. It was like a village. Nobody ever slept. Cops never went down there either because, you know, nobody ever called them and shit. Look at this guy. Straight fucking bugs in this shit. I mean, whatever. I don't know if that's a wig or that's his actual motherfucking hair. That's some crazy shit. Look like a fucking predator or something. <laughs> <laughs> so here's G Street right here, G and 18th. So 10th all the way on the other side of the neighborhood. That was the cruise. And so, actually, where we're going right now is uh, where Lil Lowe's grew up. So there's Live Oak. Shit. <laughs> That's Live Oak straight ahead over that way. I don't know if you guys see that shit. A little ass rink and dink school. These people are like, go, motherfucker. Shit, this crap got shot right here. Right after school one day. Fucking got smoked. Bing, bing. He lived, though. Lucky motherfucker. So this is a live oak. There's our PE yard. <laughs> that, that's that right there. The pavement, whatever that. So here's 17. Motherfucking shit. I ran out of memory again, man. This fucking dumb phone. I gotta get a new one. He said he'd go to my SD card, so hopefully I have enough. Anyway, here's this 17th Street right here. So Lil Lowe's. This is the house right here. Lil Lowe's grew up right here in this house. That's the motherfucker. I feel like he had a bigger porch. Oh, maybe that, no, that's it back there. Yeah, and then right on the other side, right on the other side of here, is where them blue car motherfucking scraps live. That I was telling you about last time. Fucking with the blue primer cars. It's right, right on the other side. You got Northerners right here. Southerners right there. That's how fucking shit was. It's crazy. But you know what? Motherfuckers, no one ever, no one ever like popped off in their own little fucking backyard, you know? Why would you do that? You live there. You got moms and shit or whatever, you know, kids and stuff. You know, there's a level of respect when it comes to that. You know, you get each other out on the street. But anyways, check this out. Bang, lots of harm. Hella dang smoking going on after school there. 
Shit, I remember one time we smoked Bammer in a fucking gas mask. I opened my eyes and shit burned like a motherfucker. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, that's Lil Los's old spot right there. Bing! Shit, right in that backyard right there. Was, we smoked some fucking gas masks with the fucking... I forget what weekend it was. It was one of the eight ball tweakers. Fucking... Yeah. Anyway, so... AV5 LM. Right fucking here. So, they go cruising. But we're here chilling, right? Lil Los's spot. And it, this lot... <laughs> One time, Big Lil was punked the fuck out this motherfucker. He heard the dude was talking shit. He was like, you ready? Dude was like, for what? He was like, to get down. I heard you was talking shit about me. He said, you gonna move my ass. You gotta be ready, right? He's like, oh, no, man, no. No, you guys taking out of context. Selling wolf tickets. Motherfucking calling your bluff. All right, that was a little, that was a little side story. Had to say it, because I'm here. But anyway, so yeah. Right here in this dirt lot. So... I guess I'll just tell the rest of the motherfucking story since I'm already on it anyway. So again, LM being a... Everybody knows the motherfucker could fight, right? <laughs> Anthony, he's a big dude. LM big dude, right? They're about the same size, only LM probably in a bit, you know, a bit more better shape. Well, they go they go fucking cruise the pipe. You know, LM in the fucking with his homies and shit, fucking some little fucking rice rocket type deal. And we're all chilling right here. And fucking, he sees it. He sees AB. He's like, turn around, motherfucker, turn around. And we see them go by. And it's like, we're like, oh shit, bro. <laughs> like, hey, hey. <laughs> there he goes, bro. He turned around and shit, bro. You, you see the look on his, bro. He just, like, you see fear in his face. But he just like, okay, like, you know. And then fucking, they roll up. They roll up in here and they park, like, right there. Boom, boom. LM gets out. He's like, what's up, AB? He's like, what's up? I heard you looking for me. You know, I heard you wanted. I heard you was looking for me and said, said, said you you wanted to fight and shit. You want to get down? Da da da. Ab don't say a word. He just starts taking off his jacket. And LM's like, oh, you do want to fight? Okay, fuck shit. So he starts taking off his jacket. They both take off their jackets. And it, I mean, Ab is out of is out of fear, but just. Boom, 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 just a fucking, he's big, right, he just, like, straight fucking, goddamn, Grizzly Adams, motherfucking, just throwing fucking bombers on fucking LM, bro, <laughs> LM's like, oh, what the fuck, like, just caught him off guard, like, he didn't expect that shit, you know what I'm saying, like, he just, like, did not expect that <laughs> dude was on, he was gonna come at him like that, but, again, sometimes, sometimes that fear could give you that adrenaline and that, that juice that you fucking need, <laughs> To get through shit. I mean, this is this like fucking, you know, it's like, like life and death over here. I mean, they're not going to kill each other on a fight, but still, that's how he ends. So, baby, just bombed on him, bro. Just fucking bombed on him. And, and finally, he's just like, all right, all right, it's cool, it's cool. Because <laughs> he got rocked. Now, here's the thing about LM, though. Well, I, get, I give him mad respect for this. Next day, we go to Live Oak, right? Right on this other side of the house, right? He shows up to Live Oak. AB's there, you know, we're all there. LM goes up to AB, fucking shakes his hand. He's like, you gave me stars. Say nobody ever gave me stars before. AB got his respect. You know? And I respected LM for doing that. No shame. Whatever. <laughs> he got caught, you know what I mean? AB got him on that one. And it was squashed after that, no big deal. It was all good. Of course, motherfuckers got called and shit right now, huh? I don't even know if this thing's even recording this shit. I don't know who that is. Motherfucker. Oh, yeah, it is still recording. All right, guys, that's it, man. I'll let you guys go on that one. I got to fucking figure that bullshit out, whoever that is. Yep, the world is the world, and we got to get through it. One day at a time. Enjoy that time. Time is the most precious, the most precious, precious thing. Ever. Not money, not possessions, nothing but time. Enjoy your time, take your time, and kick it with your loved ones and your homies. Alright. Late. What up everybody? Uh, Alright, so I hope I hope you guys like that. Um, I know I'm a goofy ass motherfucker and shit and you know we are uh, sometimes our our own worst critic and shit, like Nobody ever likes what they do, you know what I mean? You always fucking double-guess yourself and fucking look at it and be like, well, I'm a fucking nerd and shit, but... 
I call them high school kids and nerds and shit. They, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, <clears throat> I, I just wanted to, I, I thought about it. I was like, right before I put the fucking video out, I was like thinking like, you know what? I gotta let you guys all know what happened. Like, to the driver. AV. So, the fight and all that, that was, you know, I don't know how long it was. Maybe a year or two before uh, the whole drive through incident. But, uh, obviously he got arrested, you know, um, evading police, whatnot. But had to turn himself in. And uh, somebody said that they saw A.B.'s paperwork. That he dropped Wood's name. That he ratted out. We all know what that could lead to. Um, whether he did or not, who really knows? Uh, if I remember correctly, I do not believe he actually went on stand or anything like that. Like, like, like you know, went on the stand in trial. Because Wood did go to trial. Um, but um, it's still a sad story. So he, uh, because of all that, about a couple weeks later after that incident, and then, you know, after the, we found out and the word got around that this paperwork was out there, nobody even went. It wasn't even like, you know, he, he wasn't even get questioned by Lomi's nothing. Uh, he got jumped out, which is, like I said before, you know, when you get jumped in, it's in that bag, nobody really wants to hurt you, but uh, getting jumped out is, is always, uh, always a, uh, a rough thing. So uh, uh, he got beat half to death and was in a coma in the hospital for a couple months. He said his head looked like a pumpkin and shit. He lived with his grandma on Pepper Tree over there in the Sycamore area. Must have been really hard on her to go uh, see him like that. I never, I never saw him again uh, for, for a long, 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 long time. And then uh, I think I, shit, I think he's okay though now. You know, I mean, it's years and years later. He works at a steel mill. He's got a good job. He got his shit together. But you know, after that, he's just gone. And I think I ran into a party like years later, and uh, I was happy to see him. So that's that's you know being in a in a crew in a gang there's a lot of risks you know it's a uh, do you do it because you want to be cool hope not <laughs> uh, are you in it because that's just kind of what comes about that's kind of what happened with us you know you band together like I said so you don't get punked by the older kids that's kind of how it starts. Uh, you know, and I'm not trying to, I know I glamorize a lot of this shit, but I'm not trying to advocate about it at all, because in the end, the you know, Raymond's dead, Bigelow's dead, Wood's dead, Gabe's doing life in prison for the crime he didn't even commit that Wood did, you know, a couple homies got mopped the fuck out and shit, and for all, for what, you know what I'm saying? In the end, look where we are, a cursed game. I've had it pretty rough, but um, anyway, but I, I, I am an advocate of standing up for yourself. So that story, the reason I like this, that story with AB standing up to LM is because uh, that that's, you know, when, when I was growing up, it, it always was like, you know, oh, fighting's not the answer. Well, you know, sometimes it is. <laughs> you know, hey, if it's either fight or flight. Whatever you decide to do is your choice. You can't let anybody, you know, tell you otherwise and let you, uh, bring you down for making whatever choice you decide to do. But, uh, you definitely, uh, you just need to protect yourself because, you know, there are some fucked up ass people out there in this world. And it is a rough one. So it's just good to be, you know, always kind of on your toes, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it's worth your time. And uh, I do uh, I do have some things coming up. And if you, I don't even want to say nothing because I before I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, just going to do it for a week. Blah, blah, blah. And anything ain't coming, you know, nothing's panning out and shit, but. Anyway, just stay tuned, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you.